Hey, comrade, and welcome to Workers and Resources Soviet Republic with me, JD. Today, I want to talk about how I turn crops into rubles. Now, it doesn't matter whether it be your first town on easy mode or your last town on realistic. No matter what, you're going to need to both cut back on costs and also make some rubles. So today, I want to show you exactly how I do that. Now, as I prefer to play on realistic mode, I also want to do it in a way that doesn't require retrofits or deconstruction. Something's upgradable over time, also something that even when we're established, I keep using going forth to feed the Republic. Growing your own crops might be a nice idea, but it does require an awful lot of infrastructure early on. They also require time to grow and also to be harvested. In the meantime, we can get crops from the border. The good news is they have an unlimited amount of crops and they will buy all our produce. Before I get into today's video, I want to ask a small favor and that be, well, can I borrow a like? I'd just like to borrow a like before I explain the secret to making rubles from crops. Now, if you don't end up liking the video or you don't think it's worth your time, you're welcome to have your like back. Now, we're going to start at the customs office and we're going to look at buying crops from the border. Now, I'm going to be using prices from my particular border connection. Your border connection will vary. And of course, that is going to come down to what year you're in because the game has inflation built in. But the ratios stay roughly around the same. Now, when you click on the border connection, this is your actual sell price, not your buy price. To look at your buy price, you need to go into economy and trade and look at current prices on the global market. And we can see I'm going to be buying crops at around about 17 and a half of rubles each. Now, I'm going to make my maths nice and easy. I'm going to round that up to 20 rubles. Why am I going to round up to 20? rebels because it's going to make the maths easy and it means it's easier for you guys to digest the very first thing i want to do is i want to start buying in crops and i want to start turning them to food and the reason for food is well people eat food which is convenient also on top of that for every two crops that i bring in two and a little bit of crops i'm going to get one piece of food now if we look on the right hand side we can see that my crops are very aggrieved that we're going to be buying them in at 20 rebels a piece a little bit less than that but the round figures always help and food are we selling for 110 i mean we're calling it a which means for every 40 rubles I spend on crops, I'm going to make 100 rubles. Well, after I take away my cost, it still means I'm going to make 60 rubles for 40 rubles spent, which is some pretty good ratios. So that's the very first thing I want to build. Now, I want to build everything in a complex where I can keep expanding it over time. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Now, first off, we're going to explain the bus stop. The bus stop's at the rear. It's out of the way. And I have, well, a whole lot of workers ready to go. In fact, I'm going to start getting workers in right now because... Well, this is designed to consume and use around about 3,000, 3,500 workers when running full speed. We're going to have it running full speed eventually, but for right now, I need to get this road done. This road is our main truck transport in, and that's our food factory. And all I need to do is I need to get it to this bus stop. This bus stop can now reach our food factory straight up, not a problem. And our food factory, once it's built, will be able to access all our utilities. Our utilities are over here in this corner where, well, we had a little bit of free space and this is where I decided to dump all the utilities. It's quite out of the way and means that this one little utility area is gonna service all these factories in good time. Uh, did I get the power station? built i did not uh that should be everything built okay so if we look at you uh first off i'm going to count you back to 50 workers i'm going to say yes you have power yes you have water and yes you have sewage uh that's all you need the other thing you need is crops which is a bit of a problem because obviously I don't have any crops here right now. I do have workers on their way. And what I want to do is I want to set up a couple of trucks. Now, your mileage is definitely going to vary. All depends on how far you are from the border for how mm, how many trucks you're going to need to service this one building bringing crops. I'm going to be setting up, let's go with two trucks to start with. Uh, can I get you moving as well? Cool. So I have two trucks coming over here. They're going to be loading up with 10 tons worth of crops each. Uh, they're going to drive their 10 tons worth of crops over here each, being 20 tons total. And that'll get turned into, well, 10 tons worth of food. Now, the very first thing you're going to want to do as soon as you get this up and running is make sure your town distribution office is no longer picking up food from the border. They're going to start picking up food from here. And that is easy as setting up a connection to saying, hey, if you have 0% in the food factory, go and pick up the food from there rather than picking up from the border and stop buying it from the border because this is always going to have food in it, like all the time. In my case, to make our little mathematical calculations a little bit easier, I've intentionally separated the town from, well, our distribution, and I'm just going to have a blanket uh, cell vehicle, which is just going to be, well, selling all the 
uh, food. Now, I'm going to setting this to 40%, 50%. You have covered halls. Covered halls carry six and a half tons worth of food. You hold 25 tons. So 30%, 40%, let's go with 40%, 40%. So you're going to come over here and you're going to pick up a whole bunch of food and take it back to the border. As we can see, six and a half tons worth of food is going to net me 700 rubles. And if I look at a crop vehicle coming in, well, that cost me 167 rubles. In saying that, that's only 10 tons worth of crops and I actually need 13 tons to make, well, six and a half tons worth of food. So we're going to make 700 rubles and for round figures, rather than it being, well, 167 rubles, we're going to call it 200 rubles. So I'm going to buy in 200 rubles worth of crops and I'm going to sell them for 700. It's good money, but also I'm only running 50 workers in here. Uh, and that's all I need to just get things up and started because as you progress, as you get a bigger town, as you have more available workers, you can definitely increase these numbers. And as you can see, I have two trucks going back and forth which keeps enough crops in here currently, and also, well, is um, having enough food in here that one of you guys should be leaving, what I said to you, 40%? You could probably even be 30%. You basically wanna see, see, as soon as this is over, like six and a half, seven, eight tons, a truck leaves straight away. Now, I'm gonna run out of crops. I'm gonna run out of crops right about now. Uh, you're carrying in food, you're carrying in crops, so obviously I need a couple more crops trucks. We can organize that by finding you and giving you two more friends. In fact, let's give you a few few more friends. Let's give you all the friends, all the friends. Okay, uh, all the friends are now on the line and that means I now have, well, eight, eight vehicles. Eight vehicles are now moving crops over here at flat full speed. Also means that I'm gonna be pulling out food probably a whole lot faster. Now, I still have one big problem with this particular build and that is, if we look at the actual food factory, it only has a parking spot for two vehicles. Now, a parking spot for two vehicles is okay to start with, uh, but as you keep piling more vehicles in, you're gonna run into a couple of problems. The first one is gonna be a queue at the border. The second one is potentially gonna be a problem with two vehicles here trying to unload crops and no vehicles being able to get in to actually pick up the food to sell it. It's probably not gonna happen, honestly, with how often they move in and out, but it could happen. So to make sure that I avoid that problem, I've actually built a small little factory connection here, along with a warehouse, come on, build, and a road cargo station right here, which we need to have that road built so we can access that. Now, this road cargo station is designed to carry a whole bunch of vehicles. It is actually designed to carry in six vehicles at any one time that can, oh, uh, you technically also need that road built. Cool. Uh, it can bring in six vehicles at the same time and also can store a whole lot of crops and also pick up the food from here. So what I actually wanna do is find a crop truck, not you, uh, you. And what I wanna do, have these guys do is rather than going directly to the food factory, they can actually come up here and they can unload their crops here and no longer take them there. Cool. So they're gonna drop them in the cargo station. It's also a little bit closer to the border. And I can even say the distribution office, you know what, rather than going to the food factory, I want you to go to the cargo station. I still want you to load food but I want it to be 10%. The reason I want it to be 10% is, well, the warehouse holds a lot more food, an awful lot more food. In fact, um, this holds potentially an awful lot of food. So we need to limit the amount and I want to set this to 50% crops, 10% uh, booze for the future, 30% food and 10% uh, clothing because this is what we're going to end up storing in this warehouse eventually over time. Also means that this, I can finally set this to all the workers you can possibly afford because as long as I can get crops in here fast enough, I can definitely produce them fast enough and sell them fast enough. And you have 13 tons and can I get a busload of workers with another busload of workers? Mm, 100? You're about to run out of crops and that means you're going to start sucking crops out of the warehouse and that brings us to our next problem. Our next problem being, I just have too many vehicles. I have too many vehicles to just keep one factory running flat out with a single border connection. If you have multiple border connections, you're probably going to be a little bit longer till you get to this stage, but you're going to hit this stage eventually where you just can't get vehicles in and out fast enough to feed this one little factory. As for this one little factory, 
I'm technically... I import a whole lot, I export a whole lot less, because unfortunately, well, I have a whole lot of food in here I need to sell. Uh, and it's probably sitting here at the border waiting to be sold. Yes. So, our next step is we need to increase our distribution, well, increase our capacity, increase our capacity to get crops in here, because we know they're profitable. We've already done the maths, we know they're profitable, I just need to move them a whole lot faster. I need to make sure that the distribution office can get over here and pick up the food a whole lot faster. I now have a total of six vehicles trying to do that. And if we look at here, this is still over 10% full, which is what I've set the numbers to. So you still have potentially more vehicles that need to come over here, pick up more food and take it off to the border and sell it. So I want to upgrade to trains. Now trains have the mass advantage if they can move a whole lot more materials at once. So I want a train to go to the border and load up with crops. And then I need somewhere for it to unload. And this is when we move into the next stage of this little build, which has a tiny little road cargo, a uh, tiny little train cargo station. It's nothing fancy. And in fact, if you want to build this in, in, if you want to build this first, you can have the trucks unload here, also directly unload into the warehouse. There's many options if you don't want the transfer station. I like the transfer station because it also means that I can make sure that the town can come to the transfer station rather than going to individual buildings. And that means one connection for accessing, well, eventually our food, our clothes and our alcohol. But if you go to the border and you load up with cr uh, crops, you come here, you unload crops and we set you to wait till unloaded and we send you off, you're gonna go buy us a whole bunch of crops. Now, as you can see, my imports and my exports, they're not doing great. They're gonna do a whole lot worse when the train gets there because he's gonna be picking up an awful lot of crops at once. Like, an awful lot. Uh, you are going to be picking up uh, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 rubles? Close enough to 8,000 rubles. Yeah. And my queue at the border has got a whole lot worse. So what I want to do now is actually want to retire these vehicles. Now, these vehicles are not wasted. Okay. They have jobs to do. Because remember early on in the video, I mentioned, well, having a, a, a my, mining, harvesting crops, having farms, actually having farms. Farms are going to require a whole bunch of covered halls. So each of these covered halls that I've bought are going to end up having a new job where they go off to the farms and at the farms, uh, no, and you. There. Is that all of them? Uh, you. You're the last one. Go there. Okay. Alright. So, with the train coming across here, I now have plenty and plenty of crops. I also still have the distribution office. It's going to be trying its hardest to get over here and sell food. And all the old vehicles that I had purchased, these eight. Eight. There's one more. He's lost. Uh, this guy. Please. Are you waiting to turn around? Okay. You can go over there as well, and I have at least eight vehicles ready for my very first farms. My very first farms are going to need a couple of covered halls, and, well, we already have them pre-purchased. They were serving a new task, but now, well, an, another task, but now they have a new task. Okay. Now, the trucks are not going to keep up. Uh, honestly, with just selling food and having six trucks going back and forth, even now I've removed the giant queue, well, they're not going to keep up long term. But the good news is I have a train that's already going to and from the border. So what we can do is uh, we can add a new destination, which is after you've come to Crops for Profit Cargo Station, I want you to go to the cargo station a second time, and I want you to load food, booze, and clothes, uh, clothing, and down to 40% full. I want you to go to the board up, and I want you to sell booze, food, and clothing, well, till there's none left. Yeah, and that way the same train that's now serving the purpose of dropping off the crops is now also serving the process of eventually selling out our profits our profits but we're only employing potentially 170 workers uh you know what let's confirm it's gonna be 170 workers by throwing more buses into our uh routes and make sure that we can get all the workers here as often as possible because well i want to show this system running flat out so with you running flat out, I now have plenty of food. Plenty of food is getting moved in here. Plenty of food is going to end up on the train. It's going to go to the border. We're going to make plenty of money. But 
there's a couple of other things a couple of other things that we could e also be selling to make profits if we go into our alcohol uh, alcohol distillery we can see for 30 tons worth of crops i get six tons worth of alcohol which is a five to one ratio for every five crops i buy i get one ton worth of alcohol which then brings me to the next question is how much do crops cost so crops cost we've already agreed it's gonna be a base cost of 20 as i said your prices may change but the ratio still should be the same in fact it should get even more profitable the later you are into the game but that's beside the point what i want to do is i want to say i'm going to spend uh well five lots of crops being five lots of 20 100 rubles and then i'm going to sell that for alcohol which is 250 rubles which means well it's 150 percent profit it's a decent amount of money so i'd like to get an alcohol factory now alcohol factory is going to require another 100 workers assuming you can now run this at flat out and then you're still getting workers well up and running then you should be able to get uh this little factory built along with factory connections and remember how i mentioned the buses i want to make sure my buses and my people can reach all these stops from one bus port and this is why i build it in this direction so we end up with a single gravel path all around the way around the outside which now means i can have workers walk to the alcohol factory again if you happen to be playing with waste on you'll also notice that right here there is a single waste depot that should be able to reach the alcohol factory because it's right beside it and probably reach the food factory if not there is a single little gravel path in here which comes you know, cuts the travel distance down even lower and that means well that one waste depot covers both of these buildings also means mr train is heading to the border making me eight thousand rubles of just selling food now he's going to load up with another eight thousand rubles worth of crops which i'm going to turn into well more food and more alcohol which we've already worked out is going to give me at least double my money if not a whole lot more so you're going to load up eight thousand rubles worth of crops you're going to go and we're going to process it and we're going to come back here and assuming you were fully loaded well i'd make sixteen thousand rubles for every train load you're not being fully loaded currently but we do have also trucks that are hopefully uh can you also do that one and that one and tell your friend trucks that also hopefully are well selling the excess selling the excess that we're not having the train load up automatically because i'm only loading the train to 40 percent of capacity but um yes we should be making well you should be unloading a whole lot of crops into the warehouse and we should be making a whole lot of rubles at least that's the grand plan if we look at our imports it is 57,000 our exports are 28,000 but then again I have 60,000 crops sitting right here with another 200 tons worth of crops here being worth another 3,000 rubles so I have 12 well, 3 uh 6 9 12 12,000 rubles 12,000 rubles worth of just crops just sitting in a warehouse plus i have a whole lot of potential unsold profit right here and as i said this one bus depot is still servicing everything but again we're cutting back on our costs so we should now be making our own food which is saving us rubles we should also be making our own booze which is also saving us rubles so the next step from here is well to make the next big leap the next big leap being of course well making our own meat because meat also comes from crops so again if we look at the livestock farm the livestock farm is two crops for one livestock which is a two to one ratio but livestock is not something we eat what we eat is meat which is 150 tons worth of livestock if this building is running at max capacity for 60 tons worth of meat obviously we're not going to run it for max capacity but what we care about is the ratio the ratio is two to one so it means for every two livestock uh two two and a half livestock i get one meat and to get two and a half livestock i need uh, i need to get two and a half livestock i need five crops so i have a five to one ratio the exact same as booze and again if we come to the border the crops gonna cost cost us 100 rubles uh, the meat we're gonna also be able to sell for 227 rubles about the same price as alcohol the biggest difference between going with alcohol which requires 100 workers and a meat factory which is right here i can I get all of that built and can i also get this road built yeah okay uh the biggest difference is the oop, and i also need that factory connection yep the biggest difference is the meat factory is 
produces a whole lot of mixed waste and so does the slaughterhouse if they're running at max capacity. Obviously, the livestock farm will be running at maximum capacity, creating, ooh, where are you? Uh, creating 13 tons worth of mixed waste per day. Yeah, per, no. No, sorry, max daily garbage output is 1.13 tons. So it will be creating a whole lot of trash that you're gonna have to, well, cut into your profits, potentially. If you're sorting it properly, you can actually make a little bit of ribbles on the side. But uh, the slaughterhouse, again, in here, uh, you also output 4.5 tons if running at max capacity. Good news is we're not running you at max capacity. We're running you at about one tenth capacity. So I don't need 50 workers, I need five workers which still means you're gonna be outputting about half a ton worth of trash per day to go with the one ton here. We've got about two tons worth of trash. And again, I have a garbage stand right in the middle of both buildings, which will connect to both buildings. Also means that now I have meat. I have meat available for the Republic, which means we're gonna get a couple of refrigerator trucks and we're gonna have them come here. And if this is more than 10% full, being 7.5 tons, well, a meat truck, a refrigerator truck is gonna come over here and sell at the border or potentially you could be taking it into your town and you could be feeding your people. And again, we're still using crops. We're using crops, we're using the same infrastructure we've used right from the get-go to bring in crops, pack our train full of profits. You know, we're now loading up 15,000 rubles. Yep, and you're still loading. I oh, know you've finished loading 15,000 rubles that we're gonna to drive to the border and we're gonna replace that with 8,000 rubles worth of crops to then bring back here and process and sell. So this is the point where we're, we're definitely making some serious amount of money just processing crops. And don't forget, if you get into farming, your crops start to become free. Now, this, as you can see, has already got some alcohol and some food ready to go. On top of that, I still have these trucks also supplementing, going and getting more crops to go sell them. Also, the refrigerator trucks are now both going selling meat as well. And you already have enough ready for another truck and then probably another truck on top of that and if we look here we're in the green we're in the green we're definitely making money every single month without a problem and i am employing 170 workers plus another 100 270 plus another 55 so what's that 335 multiplied by three shifts we're, we've got about 1200 people employed so far but there's one more thing. There's one more thing we can get into to even rack up the profits even higher and still keep to just processing crops because I want to just process crops. I want to keep things as simple as possible. And that is we can get into the clothing factory. Now, to make clothes, I need to turn crops into fabric. Now, for 20 tons worth of crops, I get five tons worth of fabric, which is a four to one ratio. So for every four crops, I get one lot of fabric. And then for every two lots of fabric, I get one lot of clothes. So it actually means it's an eight to one ratio. So for eight lots of fabric, I get one lot of clothes. And if we go to the border and have a quick look, see, uh, I needed eight lots of crops, which we're gonna still say are 20, uh, 20 rubles a piece, which means we're gonna spend 160, 160 rubles on crops. And I'm then gonna sell that for clothes at 1200 rubles each. There is one catch, and that catch being, well, you also need to, when it comes to clothing, bring in chemicals. Now, chemicals are gonna cost you a little bit, not a whole lot. We get for every five tons of fabric, it's gonna cost us half a ton worth of chemicals. So for every 10 tons worth of fabric, it's gonna cost us one ton worth of chemicals. And for 10 tons worth of fabric, we're gonna make five tons worth of clothes. Five tons worth of clothes is gonna worth seven grand. And that's gonna cost me about 900, we'll call it a thousand rubles. So for seven grand spent plus some crops, and we already worked out the crops are really, really cheap, we're gonna make, you know, six grand worth of profit. So that's the last thing I wanna build as part of this little project. This little project is going to require this very last little build. And again, we make sure that, well, the workers can, where are you? Ah, the workers can walk all the way there on gravel paths. It's very important that I try and keep the gravel paths. I don't really wanna spend money on asphalt just yet. And that's going to enable the fabric factory. Now, the fabric factory has a direct connection to both of the clothing factories, also a direct connection into the warehouse. So if you do want to have fabric in here, you can have fabric in here. Honestly, not worth it. Turn the clothes first. Uh, the only thing you need is you need a direct truck. 
that is going to go to the border and load up chemicals. And then after that truck's done that, it's going to go into the uh, fabric factory and it's going to park there and wait for unloading. Because our little truck is going to carry 3.9 tons worth of chemicals. And this guy has an internal buffer of six tons worth of chemicals. Now, he's only going to use half a ton per day at maximum speed. He's not going to be running. Well, hopefully he will be running at maximum speed. But even if he is, well, that's 12 days to get another load of chemicals across here. Well, 12 days worth of storage with just one truck. There is parking spots here for two trucks. So you could get two trucks doing this. Your other option is, well, as the crops are coming in via the factory connection, we can just increase this to 95% and have like 22 days worth of chemicals stored if you're very very far from the border i don't recommend building this very far from the border i recommend this being very much part of your first town but once we get our chemical truck which is being waylaid by well it's always the border connection it's always the border connection can i have you stop doing that because we're just going to leave the train to do it and we'll have you stop doing that as well and we'll let the train do it the train is now loading up more booze, more food, and there's a little bit left over, so we're gonna up this to 50% to make sure we empty everything as quickly as possible, because I also want to make sure I don't run out of crops. And where's my chemical truck? Uh, your food, your booze, your something else. Chemical truck is not in there. Never mind, he's already dropped it off. All right, uh, so with you dropping off the chemicals, we're now processing chemicals, well, processing fabric. We're going to be running the fabric into both of these factories to also make clothes, which, and then the clothes are going to end up back inside the main warehouse where the train or the trucks could pick them up. The trucks are really designed for, you know, feeding your hometown, feeding it to make sure it has, well, food, alcohol, and clothing all available, and so you don't have to buy it from the border and everything else is gonna be sold. Like, all of it's gonna get sold. In fact, we've just about run out of crops. We did have 640 tons in here when the train left, don't forget. And we've basically burnt through all of it. Which means our profit and loss doesn't look terribly good at the moment, uh, but we will start to tick over and go up as we, well, stop building things mainly. Uh, as for total workers, we have 170 in here plus another 100 here, so that's 270, plus another 50, that's 320, uh, plus another 5, 325, plus another 100, so that's 425, plus another 160, so we're at mm, 500, 600 workers right here. So in theory, if you're running three shifts, that's about 1,800 workers. 1,800 workers to keep this running, which means your first town of like three, four, five thousand depending on how efficient you are, could all be working in this one factory, making a whole pile of money. It is going to create a whole lot of pollution. It's also going to create a whole lot of waste. You know, I have been optimized as possible with the waste depots to make sure that, well, we have the minimum amount of waste depots. Also really recommend that you run this road a little bit further away so they don't park themselves right here with a train in the way. Just a small optimization. And you are selling 30,000 rubles worth of potential profit. An awful lot of profit. And don't forget, I still have the hometown on. Well, they're buying everything because I want to keep the truck separate. Uh, and you're going to load back up on crops and come all the way back. Actually, can we look at this? Uh, import is crops. It is, no, uh, this month. This month. We've bought 38,000 uh, rubles worth of crops and export, I have sold 98,000. Yeah, that's how profitable we are already. Now, the first question you might have is, Jenny, how do I put this together? And uh, let's go through a speed run of exactly how to put this together. I'm gonna turn on the grid to make things a little bit easier. I'm gonna even go as far as I'm gonna turn on the magnet because most of this goes through, goes together with the magnet. I also have the picking tool uh, to just clone a building on my first, uh, my first hot tip. My first tool tip. That's the words I'm looking for. All right. So what I want to do is I want to put the warehouse. The warehouse is going to go center mass and we just need to dump that down. You do want to have the road connection for it pointing towards the border. Okay. From there, we're going to, going to grab the uh, road depot and can I spin them around and we want to put you... Uh, nope. Can I have the road depot back? 
<laughs> I want to put you here. And your distance out doesn't really matter too much because your services are going to go right here for power. So you do have the flexibility for this one to move it further out should you want to. Um, it does mean that you can put it all the way out here if you wanted and then put the train station well buried in here. Uh, giving you a little bit further, a little bit more room to get the whole train in to park. But the point is it goes hard up against well, the road cargo station and we drop that right there. Okay, with those two in and place, next one is going to be, uh, well, actually, next one's going to be the road. And we're going to turn off the grid and just keep a grid line. So we get roughly a straight line. No, nah, actually, no, let's do the road last. All right, we're going to grab the alcohol factory. Alcohol factory needs to have that factory connection right there. And also be as close to that line at the front for the road for the warehouse because, well, we want them to share the same road. And, whoop, no, go away. And then can I grab this? And we're going to go road right here. We're just going to drag it as far out as we need to and then plug that in there. Okay. Next up is going to be the food factories. Now, the food factory, I place this one sideways. You don't have to place them sideways. If you want to have some redundancy, you can, uh, if I can zoom in far enough, uh, you can straighten them up and place one here and a second one here and then run, can I get rid of that, and run a factory connection in here, and a factory, no, okay, you gotta go over a little bit further, and turn back on the grid, there we go, that line there, copy, no, plug there, cool, you can run two food factories, okay, two food factories means you have some redundancy, should one of them need to go down for repairs, maintenance, that sort of stuff, you have a second one that can also keep the food flowing, that's entirely up to you. I actually recommend build two of these, like one in your first town, one in a second or a third town, because eventually these buildings are going to require maintenance if you're playing in realistic mode. And when they require maintenance, they have downtime. That's perfectly fine, because... Mm, why is the garbage truck in there? Oh, because you have dedicated hazardous waste. There you go. Uh, yes, eventually it's going to have some downtime, and, you know, you can have the second food factory kick in. All right, next up, we're going to need the... Uh, uh, the, 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 the livestock farm. All right. Livestock farm, we want to face to the right, and I'm trying to keep that row, uh, that factory connection straight-ish, uh, but, you know, out of the way. Uh, we're going to dump you right there. This one, being the slaughterhouse, is a little bit awkward. We need to rotate you around, and then I actually need to turn off the grid for this one, and I sort of need you to go up as high as you can and as far to the left as possible. I want to, actually it's probably better from this angle, weird. let's turn the grid on so we get some straight lines. Uh, come on, right there. Uh, I want to keep the left hand side of this building and of the, uh, the cattle farm, that's the words, the cattle farm, that'll do. Uh, I want to try and keep them uh, lined, with, lined up with one another as best as possible. Don't forget, I still need to put a garbage disposal behind this. So stretch that factory connection out as far as you can and make sure you're as far to the right as possible. Okay, from there, we're going to need the fridge. The fridge is just going to go right beside this, plugged in. You can turn on the grid for this. You can turn it off. It's entirely up to you. We're just going to dump that right there. All right, next up is going to be the food, uh, the Fabric Factory. Uh, fabric Factory is going to go... Actually, no. It's going to be the Clothing Factory. Can I grab Clothing first? Uh, we're going to grab Clothing Factory. And I, again, I want to go this way so the text box gets far out of the way. And we want to go to the far right as possible and drop that there. Okay. Then the Fabric Factory is going to go road facing out. And you just want to plug you in really anywhere. It doesn't matter too much. You can go closer. Uh, you are meant to connect into the center most one. So now we know that we can pick you up and uh, spin you around and move everything a little bit closer together. Oop. Can I put you here? Mm, there. Perfect. All right. So that gives us our outline of our buildings. All right. And one road connection. One road connection is all we need to start us off because what I need to do is I need to take a road, okay, grid lines. We want to take a road to about here, a road to about here, and then a road around about here. That one might have to come a little bit closer. And I want another road connection 
with a little bit more gap here. And then we're gonna join in that corner. We're going to run this one to here. Yeah, I didn't think you'd like that. Uh, can I cut back that road a little bit? And into there, we're gonna run that one into there. And we're gonna run you back a little bit and into there. Okay, uh, as for services, we, oh no, actually let's do that road, that road, uh, that road. You need a road, you need a road, and you need a road, you need a road. Like I said, slightly different design because we're going with two food factories. Uh, and I do need the bus stop. So the bus stop goes here in the middle. Uh, the idea being that everything should be reachable either on gravel or not, if not on gravel, it should be reachable via a footpath that we're going to be running around the outside. So let's grab our footpath. We're going to go a gravel path. We're going to bring it to here and then around the corner and then all the way along here to, let's stop there, plug that into there and then into there. Cool. Can you reach the booze factory? You can, right? Can we go from here to here okay, without that little dodgy bit? Uh, go, go away. Cool. Uh, you around to here and then all the way up to uh, here around that corner and into that one. Okay. Can you reach everything? You cannot reach the fabric factory because you need one uh, path connection through there as well. Okay. You should now be able to reach everything. You can reach everything. Right. Next up we need is waste. Let's do waste really quickly. We grab this waste bin and this waste bin. Uh, come on needs to sit uh actually no i forgot you cool now waste bin uh there you need to sit you're not gonna light up are you nope uh can i approve the planning you gonna light up now no thanks all right you going there should be able to reach uh the um livestock farm and you going there means uh, can i remove that and try again see if it actually lights up there's some update with trash which means it doesn't light up half the time okay right there trust me uh next one is gonna go right here and access see you light up perfectly fine they don't seem to operate and look at the paths they just look at the roads uh you are gonna go right there and here because i've added three of them you may have a problem, uh, but in theory, well, you're probably going to have a problem, actually. Uh, can we actually just do... Yeah, and can I build that, and that, and that, and that. Fine. Now we can do a double shift. Uh, yep, you're both reachable, 122 meters and 62 meters. As for our other trash bin, uh, path. Uh, can I get a path? through there not that you really need it but you might need it for trash and I get that through there and that through there okay can I grab you again uh so they're both accessible you don't have a footpath no okay so if you want to build three of them you're going to need to put a trash bin here and a friendly trash bin well just hanging off a road or jam in the middle it's entirely up to you so, uh, one extra trash bin, but you get one extra food factory. And that's your basic design. Uh, the only other thing you're gonna need is a couple of services. Plumbing wise, you're gonna need a sewage tank. It's gonna go up in this area. This area up here in front of the fabric factory is your service area. You're also gonna need, if you're playing with waste on, well, sewage on, you need a sewage switch uh, because the fabric factory has a direct sewage output. It also has a direct water in, which means you're gonna need a water switch as well to bring water directly into the building. You're also gonna need, obviously, the water substation. Again, right here reaches everything. And finally, uh, electrical, electrical substation. Use the footpath version. And right here accesses all the buildings. That's gonna be very, very important. It means that all your services go in one tiny little area. Everything can be accessed, everything can be touched from one little location. Oh, the bus stop. Okay, you're gonna have to go more towards the center for the power, but that means just put the sewage on the other side. But yes, one central area, which means once you get the infrastructure in, you don't have to worry about it to get the rest of the buildings up and running. As for our little train that's been running for a little while, 
we've made 32,000 pounds, uh, 32,000 rubles, not pounds, and uh, exports 100k, import is only 30k. So realistically, minus construction costs, uh, we've made 70,000 rubles in, well, 23, three days, which is, I would say good money, good money. We're also keeping a whole bunch of people employed and this is very, very easy to set up. It's not terribly expensive on the infrastructure. Uh, you won't tell me what the exact cost of this is now that I've built parts of it. No, that's unfortunate. It's not terribly expensive put, put together and that doesn't matter whether you're playing realistic mode or you're playing, um, well, normal mode. And uh, with all that said and done, I don't think I have anything else to add apart from if you're interested in workers' resources, you want to see more tutorial videos like this, by all means, hit the subscribe button. Also, probably down in the description, maybe the pinned comment below, I do have a current Let's Play where I went through the process of building this uh, the hard way, without planning it out, without sort of stressing things out. And um, it worked mostly well. It requires some retrofits, and this is why I decided to show, share this design with you guys, which doesn't require any retrofits. It is going to get you from early game through to late game. And like I said, if you want to build two of them, it means you have that redundancy built in because let's face it, for the whole game, you're gonna need meat, you're gonna need food, you need booze, and you need clothing. So you can have two of these guys running to keep the factory clothed, drunk, fed, and well, fed with meat, and sell the excess. And to sell the excess, distribution office. Distribution office, just tell it to go to the station. And hey, you got over 50% full, take it to the border, sell it. Anyway, with all that said and done, I'm gonna call this video here as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. And remember, comrade, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. All right, we're out. Thanks for watching. Bye.